My name is Maura Gamble. I'm a permaculture teacher, designer and writer. With my family, I live a simple, debt-free life in a permaculture eco-village in the Australian subtropics. My edible landscape is low maintenance, abundant and a great sense of joy. We've built our own house, a modular house which collects all its own water and power and processes its wastes. In this series of films, I'd like to show you around. Hi, my name's Maura Gamble and this is our permaculture life. Every week I do a video in my garden or in my home. Today we're going to focus on edible flowers. It's absolutely amazing how many flowers you can harvest from your garden. The herbs, the vegetables, the fruits and the natives. So I'll take you for a wander through my garden of some of the edible flowers that you can consume every day. Um, this one here in front of me is rocket or arugula. It's currently a very, very big favourite with the bees so I'll just be careful here. This is of the brassica family and all brassicas are actually edible. And this is a beautiful white one. It's a lovely garnish. It has the same sort of flavor as the leaves of the rocket or arugula, but just a little bit milder. So great in a salad. You can eat it raw or cooked. I prefer it just as a garnish. Next to me here is the garlic chives or society garlic flower. Now the leaves of this particular plant are a great garlic alternative, but even better with more garlic flavour are the garlic flowers. I've even made a whole hummus dish just using the flowers for the garlic flavour and it was absolutely delicious. They're really flavoursome and really strong. It's actually a really nice thing to do is to gather a whole lot of flowers as a flower bouquet for your table too. Um, behind me here is another brassica. This is the mustard spinach. And as you can see, what started as maybe quite a small plant is this wonderful flourishing bee home that attracts not only bees but other beneficial insects into the garden. Now this one here, I can see some native bees on this one as well. That's fantastic. It's such a, an amazing home for a wealth of, of insects that help me with my pest management because in this garden, I don't spray anything. I just rely on all of the, the species that come into my garden, attracted by the flowers and by the various perennial plants to be my assistants in the garden. So these flowers are edible. They're really nice and spicy. Fabulous on the top of a salad. And also the shoots before they flower. Here, you can see just before it's starting to flower, this bit here you can snap off and eat as a salad green or as a stir-fry ingredient and also the stems as they're going up to shoot up to flower. While it's still flexible you can eat it as a vegetable. It's absolutely fantastic. Now another one behind me here too is the snow pea flower. So all of the, all of the flowers from this pea family are edible and so are the shoots. You wouldn't want to pick off too many of these because otherwise you wouldn't get enough peas. But it's a lovely thing to add into a, into a salad as well. So not only can you eat the snow peas, but you can eat the lovely shoots and the flowers as well. And right next to me here, next to the peas, is a lettuce plant. Now amazingly, if you leave one lettuce go to seed, like this one here, it was a baby little plant and it's now... Um, oh, over waist height. Once this goes to seed, it will produce probably 10,000 seeds from just this one plant. But while you're waiting, you know, you might want to sacrifice a few of those and pick off some and, and have those in your, in your salad too. It just tastes like a very mild lettucey flavour. So the peas are quite a mild pea flavour, the lettuce is quite a lettucey flavour, the mustards are actually quite a spicy mustardy flavour. So most of the flowers have a flavour reminiscent of the plant that they're from. Behind us, further up the hill, is a sacred basil plant. And this sacred basil plant also is what we call our bee bush here. It's always got bees flying around it. And the flowers on this, as well as the seeds, are edible. And they again have, a, have the basil flavour, but just a little bit milder. And interestingly, something I learnt more recently, is that also the amazing flowers from a fuchsia are edible. I'd always thought that this was just a, an ornamental plant and 
we placed fuchsias in the garden because my daughter really loves the colour. But these petals are also edible. And once they're finished, the little berries that are created too are also edible. And they're such a gorgeous thing to add into the garden. Within my garden too, there's many herbs that are flowering. One of them that one of them that I love to eat all the time is coriander or cilantro. Now here you can see it's just starting to flower. And coriander does have a tendency to bolt, but that doesn't mean that your plant is finished. It's just a time for the next phase of it. All of these flowers are edible. And as you can see, they're like little bee landing pads. They're absolutely fantastic for attracting beneficial insects into your garden and totally edible too. And then once those flowers are finished, you get all those little balls, which are your coriander spice, which you can grind up and use in, in curries and flavoring all different sorts of cooking. So coriander, that's a really useful one. Now, there's the things that you grow and there's the things that you don't grow, even the weeds. For example, this is ageratum, a common weed in many gardens around the world. This one here is a very useful um, skin ointment. I use it in bathtubs. If you get bitten by lots of little insects or you have tick bites or the children are irritated by, by some bite, you can put these flowers in a bathtub and it really helps to soothe the skin and soothe the itches. So that's ageratum. One of the types of vegetables that I don't eat, um, the flowers that I don't eat, are from the Solanaceae family. So things like tomatoes and eggplants, um, potatoes, and you can tell here, this is, this is a tomato plant, and this is what all of the flowers of that family will look like, something like this. And so you can identify a family of plants by their type of flower. So anything that looks like this, I would avoid. That's tomato. And over here, this is pepino, which is a type of running melon plant, and that's its flower, which looks very similar to the tomato, same form but just a different colour. So these ones I'll leave in the garden for the bees and for the fruits. Edible flowers are great in your garden. I love them in salads, I love them in stir fries, but I also think they're fantastic as drinks, both as hot drinks, as teas, and also cool drinks. This is one of my favourites. Um, it, it's an annual and it's winter time now, so it's, it's, it's um, out and I've dried it so that I can save these through the winter. These are the, the dried calyx of the flower of the rosella, the uh, hibiscus plant, also a Jamaica flower. I use it quite often just to put in a water bottle, soak and get this gorgeous colour. It's actually one of the highest vitamin C drinks. It has a similar flavour to um, rose hip from roses. And so this red, beautiful red drink is fantastic. Another plant which is a great one for a tea or a, a nice drink this is pineapple sage. The leaves of it have a, a very pineapple -y flavor, but you can also pluck the flowers. And this is a great thing that kids love. And just suck the nectar out. So you can put, once this plant gets bigger, I'll be taking all the flowers and putting them in some water and allowing it to infuse. And it will be a beautiful floral nectary drink. Some of the most common herbs that you'll find in, in many gardens, like rosemary, lavender, sage, thyme, oregano, all of the flowers of those plants are edible. These ones all have a slightly milder flavour of the herb itself and you can just harvest them and have them in a salad. Another very flavoursome tea plant that you can grow in many gardens is the osmanthus. I discovered this one in a, in a China tea shop. It's great to blend as a flower tea with green teas or black teas or to have on its own. So at this time of year when it's flowering now, you just gently come in and harvest the flowers off and you can dry these and save them for the rest of the year and add them into your teas. These are fabulous as a medicine too. They're really good for coughs and colds. They help to break up any lung infection and they're also really great for di digestion. And if you're making your own cosmetics, it's a fabulous one to add into the mixture of your face creams. It really helps with complexion. So at the moment, it's winter time, so it's a great idea. I and mean, it's great that these trees have so many flowers on them because a lot of people have the coughs and colds in winter time. So I'll be coming soon, harvesting all of these flowers and drying them so that I can have them as long as they last for the rest of the year too. The citrus is starting to bloom again and there's a wonderful scent of that sweet smell through the air. 
but did you know that you can also eat these lovely little waxy flowers? You can either add them kind of sparingly to a, to a dish or uh, steep them in water and use them to add a citrusy flavour to um, baked goods. Like many legume species, this coral tree has edible flowers and these gorgeous bright red flowers are fabulous garnish to many salads and totally edible too. There are many Australian native plants that also have edible flowers. This is a brachychiton, a brachychiton vidwillii or a, a little currawong. And the flowers on this, the gorgeous flowers which come off the stem, are also just a great garnish on top of a salad that you can, you can eat. Totally edible. The seeds are edible of this plant too. It's a, it's a relative of the flame tree. Other plants that are edible in the native Australian plants are things like revillias and, and bottle brushes. So these ones have so much nectar that you can chop off these little flowers and soak them in some water and get a beautiful nectary sweet drink. And these are just flourishing at the moment.